This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. To find out how you can help kickstart our latest show, Live from Bay 6, visit our website and click on the Kickstarter button. Coming up on Game On, a 3D game that is actually 2D. Or a, a, two, a 2D game that is in 3... Camp. Just watch and see for yourself. Yes. Hey there, everyone, and welcome to Game On. I'm Cameron Harris, and joining me today, my good friend, Mr. Sean O'Brien, avid Xbox gamer. I like to think so. Yes, indeed. Thanks for coming on, Sean. Definitely. So today we're taking a look at Shadow Complex. Yes. And that's a game that's downloadable, uh, not an actual disc game, but downloadable in the Xbox Live marketplace. Right. So only if you have Xbox Live, unfortunately, you can get this. But um, it is a very awesome game on Xbox Live, and also pretty impressive considering it is a downloadable game. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time they're like small, smaller games than usual. But yeah. This looks. This looks. From what I've seen, it looks pretty impressive. Yeah. Graphics-wise and everything, pretty impressive for a downloadable game. Cool. Sort of an action adventure type game, rated mm -hmm. T for Teen. Yep. So, you know, not super gory or anything, just fun. <laughs> cool. And uh, what's the storyline behind it? Um, well, actually, the beginning of the game uh, kind of has a cutscene, which is kind of amusing. You're, uh, you come in in a truck with your girlfriend who you're taking on a date to this, you know, forest, kind of secluded retreat. And uh, you go hiking in some caverns. These stormtrooper-ish guys come out, abduct you, you get separated, and that's where the story leaves you. So it's, uh, it's a pretty quick kind of into the deep end of the, of the game. And basically, you're trying to figure out a way to get her and you out of there safely. And as you go through the game, you get more involved in uh, what this complex is, hence the name Shadow Complex, um, and who the people are running it, and all the technology there. Um, so you, you definitely get more in depth as the game goes along. It's not just escape. Cool, let's take a look. So we're at the main uh, controller screen now. Right, main menu of Shadow Complex. Um, here we have a couple of options to view Xbox Live achievements. Um, the leaderboards help, kind of explains the controls and everything. Um, that is one thing about the game. It When it throws you into the game, you don't really know what's going on as far as controls or anything. I mean, look around, it's kind of intuitive, but the, the 2D, 3D aspect is a little bit complicated. So you might want to check out the help screen before you dive right in. So but. it's kind of like the help screen is kind of like the tutorial. It's not built into the game. They exactly. They launch you right in. Yeah. Um, okay. Throughout the game, there are some te uh, tips, um, and there are screens that offer some information. But you know, for a little bit more before you start, maybe check out the help screen. Cool. Um, and then we also have up here the option for campaign. Uh, if we take a look at that menu, we have the main adventure, and we have proving grounds. Now, the main adventure is just kind of like the storyline of the game. Uh, proving grounds are actually challenges. Um, there's tutorials, and then there's challenge pack one, all the way up to, I don't remember how many challenge packs there are. I haven't completed all of them, as you can see. So are challenge packs like little um, expansion packs that you can buy separately? Or? Uh, challenge packs actually come with the game. Oh, cool. um, they're basically you know, obstacle courses or different short challenges that you uh, want to complete as quickly as possible. Okay. So unlike the game where, you know, you might put a number of hours into it. Challenge packs are just little short levels, maybe two minutes in length. Gotcha. So they're kind of nice to play after or before, uh, get really good at the game, and then go into the campaign. Cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, if we head up here to main adventure, we'll just continue my previous campaign. So this is Shadow Complex. Um, the game takes place kind of uh, in a mixed environment of outdoors and indoors. Um, I'll go ahead and take a look at the map here, just so you can see how big the game is. Wow. So this little square is where we are now. If we zoom out, that's how big the map is. Oh, man. <laughs> it's massive. So I take it you haven't completed this game all the way through yet. Um, well, the campaign mode, I've actually, amazingly enough, gotten 100% completion. Wow. So 100% of the weapons. Oh, so this is the whole map. Yes, this is the whole map here. Okay. It is one giant level. Wow. <laughs> um, and as you, you notice how the different areas of the map are multicolored? Mm -hmm. As you go through the game, you work generally on a colored area at a time. Okay. 
So I, I don't remember exactly where you start. I believe it's somewhere in the orange section, of my, right about here. And then as you go through the game, you, know, you go down levels and over to this side and back over to this side. It's really interesting how the story plays out. That's very cool. It's very non-linear. It's very, it goes out in different branches, gives you choices as to where you can go. Right. Um, also, uh, part of, neat part of the gameplay, um, you have different technologies that you can find. So for instance, I can jump. I have jetpacks on my feet. <laughs> so you can jump really high. Unfortunately, you don't get this till much later on in the game. Uh, okay. <laughs> you start out being able to jump relatively high. Um, some other cool features, I mean, you know, basic controls, move left, right. Oh, okay, so we have some enemies here. So if you notice, that enemy there actually went into the background of the game. Oh, interesting. So the enemies can actually move in terms of actually in three dimensions. You cannot. This is strictly left, right, up, down. There is right. no third dimension. Right. My character is, you know, like you said, strictly left, right, up, down. However, the, the levels are definitely three-dimensional, and the enemies and some of the objects you shoot go into other dimensions. Now, this is kind of an interesting game because it's sort of a combination of platformer in that, you know, kind of like, you know, you know the, the Mario games back in the day where, you know, it was all in 2D like this. Right. But at the same time, it's also a shooter. Exactly. So it's, uh, it's, it's very simplistic in that you can only move left, right, up, down. But it's you know the 3D graphics along with the shooter, uh, you know, basic genre of a shooter game makes it a very interesting combination. Um, and it's also they call it kind of like an action adventure game. I would almost throw like a puzzle into there because mm. some of the some of what you have to go through is very uh, it, it's very challenging. Kind of like you know switches have to open doors and exactly. Things like that. Okay. Um, for instance, if you take a look at the screen here. You, you have a, um, a tool called a flashlight. I mean, it's just a basic flashlight. Mm -hmm. But it does a little more than just light up dark hallways and things. Um, if I point it at this grate down here, you'll notice that it kind of turns, turns orange. Mm -hmm. Orange things I can shoot with my gun. Ah. So I shoot it, it dissolves, and I'll go down a level. Oh, wow. And otherwise, you wouldn't really know where to go. That In some parts, you're like, all right, you're looking around the room going, where do I go? Turn on your flashlight, something will light up red, which is for missiles, green is for grenades, purple is foam. Um, then you know, all right, I need to shoot it with this, and I go to the next area. OK. So it's very uh, interesting that way as well. Looks like you've got some health here. Yes. Uh, thankfully enough, they were nice enough to include health packs throughout the level. Good. <laughs> um, as you can see in the bottom right, I have a maximum of 999 health. OK the end of the game, you get 999. You slowly accumulate with uh, okay. health upgrades through the game. You start out with, uh, I believe, 50 or 100 health. I can't remember exactly. OK, so it gets you get more pretty quickly. Yes, and the enemies definitely get more challenging. Ah, so here's a, uh, a rock. It turns red with the flashlight. So you know, if you turn the flashlight off, it's not red. It's not cartoony. Mm -hmm. you turn it on, you're like, oh, OK, I have to use my missiles here. Interesting. Yeah, and on you go. Very cool. Now the graphics in this game, I mean, considering that it's basically, it's a two-dimensional game, the graphics are in 3D. You move right. in two dimensions, but they are full 3D graphics, and they look quite gorgeous. I mean, everything considered, considering it's a downloadable game, mm -hmm. it's running off the hard disk, and it's, it's really impressive for what it is. Oh, wow. <laughs> and a little guy. Spider robot? Yes. You have some very interesting enemies as you go on. Not just standard soldiers and guns. Very cool. Right. Very cool. Now, how about the uh, the controls? What are the controls like on this? Well, the controls are, they seem to be simple when you start. <laughs> OK. Um, you know, the left stick is move left, right, um, and look up and down. Um, to aim, it's the right uh, analog stick. So okay. you can aim like that. And again, you're only aiming in two dimensions, so it's more like a fan kind of. Right, although if, if we go into this next room, you know, as I'll, I'll aim up, it's straight up, I'll aim down, it's straight down. But if I aim over here, notice how it jumps to the oh, background. Oh, so it kind of snaps to an enemy if the enemy is in the background. Right. Um, so I'm holding the, the analog stick all the way to the left, and it's going up to him. OK. And then next up, I'll hold it up a little higher, it goes up to him, back down. 
So it takes a little getting used to it snapping over like that. Mm -hmm. I and mean, it's nice that it does, or else it would just be way too confusing. Right. And having actually you know, like full 3D aiming when, you're, when you can only move in 2D, that would get pretty confusing pretty quickly. Exactly. So I think it's a nice combination of uh, how they incorporate aiming into 2D, 3D. It's different than a lot of other games, so it would take yeah. a little bit of getting used to. But in general, pretty intuitive. Yeah, definitely. Good. It's also nice that it has the little sight. Uh, most of your guns, when you're aiming, have that sight. That's very nice. So yeah. you know approximately where you're aiming. Because like, unlike like in a 3D game, you have like a little target or a reticule in the middle of your screen where you right. can see where you're pointing your gun. But in this case, you don't have that. It's right. Still, so it's nice that they give you kind of a laser sight almost. You know, just looking around, I can point my gun in different directions, but knowing exactly where I'm shooting is slightly difficult. Yeah. Um, and you know, as we're just going up, there's more and more of the levels. And uh, you know, running along, just the trees are incredible. Um, waterfalls and the levels seem endless almost. Yeah. Well, and the whole thing is one big map, so in a way, it is almost right. endless. And no loading times between you know these maps. That it's is just... impressive. Partially because it's running right off the hard disk, I would imagine. Right. So because it's, it's a downloadable game, no disk to stream from. Exactly. So Very it's cool. pretty fast. Now, how how easy is it to go through the game? Not just like controls, but how easy is the game itself. Is it a nice amount of challenge? Is it too difficult in some places, too easy in others? Um, it's, I would say it's a, it's a nice level of challenge. Um, I completed the game, let me check here, on just the normal difficulty. Okay. So there's four levels, casual, normal, hardcore, and insane. Have you ever ventured beyond normal? I've completed the game on hardcore. Uh, insane, I haven't. <laughs> yeah. It, I take it it would be insane. For lack of better words, it is. Yeah. So, but w now the difficulty level, when that changes, does that just make enemies more difficult to destroy or? Um, more difficult to destroy and they, d they damage you. Uh, and they damage you more. Okay. Right. So it's not like they give you like a di more difficult maps or anything like that. No, it's the same map, uh, same, theoretically the same enemies. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a whole lot harder. Very cool stuff. So you would recommend starting on normal? Yeah. Definitely. I mean, normal is a, is a nice level of challenge. Okay. Some points you'll have to replay maybe a couple times. Some challenges you'll probably go, where do I go? But, um, yeah. you know, it's a nice level of challenge. Very cool stuff. So I noticed you've got this, um, looks like uh, kind of like a smaller version of that map that you, the big map that you had. Right. So you can see which uh, quadrant of the map you're in. Okay. And is that the little flashing one in the center? Yes. Okay. The flashing one is where you are and it will move with you as you go along. And notice how, like, where if you look right next to the flashing one, there's a, there's a big, long tunnel that goes down. So that tells me if I go down here, I'll drop down. And, you know. Oh, interesting. And then the map updates. Right. It updates as you go along. Um, and there's also, you know, if you hit the back button, it pulls you up to the full-size map. Cool. Um, You're the little blinking man, I take it. Yep, that's where we are. Um, the map is very useful, considering this game is so huge. Yeah. Um, the red stars are save points. Okay. Uh, those include, I'll walk, actually walk into one right now. They have uh, ammo, health, and it saves the game every time you walk into it. Okay, one. so it's not on an auto save. You do need to get to a point and save it. Exactly. And then that's the point you would regenerate from if you were to die. Right. Okay. So I just want to show this room. This is after you've gotten all of the weapons. Uh, you can come back and switch out to any of them that you want. Oh, that's cool. So you can't carry all of them at once. Right. You, you upgrade and you get a newer, better one. Okay. So, for instance, you, you start at the pistol. This is the very first one you have. Then you come over here. I, I'm not going to forget all of the names of these, but essentially a machine gun. Uh, this guy is almost like a shotgun. Mm -hmm. Have another machine gun. And uh, I think that's like a... AK-47 or something like that, but anyway, the one in the middle here is the last one that you get for the most powerful gun. Yeah, it's the one you want to carry around. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks so much for uh, coming on and showing us that. Definitely. It's, it's one of my all-time favorites for Xbox. Definitely. I can see why. Yeah, a lot of fun, many hours of, many hours of fun gameplay. Definitely. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, watching this episode of Game On. In the meantime, be sure to visit our website, www.harwoodpodcast.com. We'll have a link where you can learn more about Shadow Complex and download it for Xbox if you uh, want to give it a shot yourself. And if you have any questions or comments for me about the show, suggestions for games I should review or anything like that, you can send me an email at cameron at harwoodpodcast.com. Until next time, Game On. Game On.